Hello, fellow Divine Feminines. How are you doing out there? I'm doing rather well today. My name is Daniela Jumel. For those who may not know me, if you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome. It's nice to see you again. Um, I thought I would do things a little differently today. Um, I wanted to just have a little chat about um, divine timing and being able to trust that divine timing and allow the ego and the mind and all that to just kind of take a back seat um, because it really is true that if you do that and just allow things to unfold naturally um, it'll happen so much better than you could ever plan or imagine or engineer or whatever when it comes to all areas of your life whether that be your job your family situation you know all of that it doesn't have to be um, to do with your divine connection but um, in my case I feel compelled to discuss this because when I was earlier on in this process even only I don't know eight or nine months ago uh, I remember hearing that from another divine feminine and thinking <laughs> how am I supposed to believe that because you know if you want something you're supposed to go and get it you know and work towards that actively you're not supposed to just kind of gee I hope that happens um, you know because that's what I thought that that meant um, it's not true um, it's not that you're just kind of wishing and hoping that you know something will show up for you it's that you've released the need for that particular outcome I think that's the difference it's not that you're just sitting waiting passively and just kind of fingers crossed hopefully this all works out the way I, I would like um because <clears throat> uh, that's not it either it's not that you're just sitting around doing nothing and hoping you're just you've released the need for a particular outcome in our context here I'll just keep it simple and say okay if you want to have a union with your divine masculine I'm going to assume because if you're watching this you're likely divine feminine uh, but anyway I'm going to assume that's kind of a particular outcome that you're really thinking a lot about probably and hoping about and wondering what can be done about that and how can you make things happen that way right I know I've been there but um, what's interesting is just releasing that outcome and just allowing what needs to happen to happen because when you're living through this you're in the trench right it I hate to use World War one you know an, 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 an analogy from World War one but it does feel a lot like trench warfare sometimes when we're living life right because we're down low and we don't know what's kind of over there um, as easily as we do right as when we get older and we look back on events and go oh wow I didn't even realize that was going on holy smoke right like <laughs> it all seems so obvious because hindsight's 2020 all that uh, but I feel like I can share this because I think it might help someone to hear um, just a quick little little backstory here um, in case you don't know uh, myself and my divine masculine met each other when we were very young we were both 12 years old and uh, my family had to move away from from the city where we were both living and you know being that age right I had no say in any of this 
had to go where my family was going. <laughs> and, you know, he had no say in any of this either. He was 12 years old as well and had to live at home with his family, right? Um, and there was this lack of, lack of ability to spend time together, get to know each other and all that stuff. Well, we ended up writing lots of letters over the years. And this all happened, oh, the last letters that I had were from 1997. So <laughs> it's been about 26 years uh, since, since we were together, right? And for years and years, more recently, I thought, oh, I must have lost the letters. Maybe I got rid of them. Maybe I threw them away because I was so done with this entire thing and I wanted it to disappear. Um, and I, I kind of had made peace with that and thought, oh, I guess I did. I guess I just don't have them anymore, even though that's sad and I'm really sorry about it. Um, and I also thought that I'd lost some photographs that I took the last night that we were ever together in one room, which was in 2002, so 21 years ago. And I took those images on film because it was still <laughs> not fully the digital photography era that we are in now. And I thought, yeah, the negatives and the, and the photos themselves are probably just gone because I haven't seen them in such a long time. Well, I was unpacking uh, last week. I got some more boxes from, uh, from my ex-husband's house and I just had a weird feeling when I saw this particular bag that was kind of stuffed into a box and I had not seen that in a long, long time. And I just had this funny, hmm, I haven't seen that in a while, but I really noticed that it's there, and I noticed something sticking out the side. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. And so I pulled it out, and I looked inside. There they were. I, at some point, about 10 or 12 years ago, um, I, I took them. I, I remembered, like once, you know how that happens sometimes, where you don't remember, and then all of a sudden you see something in this case it was a bright orange gift bag and i saw it and kind of had this memory of that's right i stuffed those letters in there like because i thought i need i need to do something with these but i don't know what because i was married to somebody else <laughs> right so i had this guilt about holding on to these but I also had this other part of me that was like, you do not throw those away. You don't. You do not. And I'd forgotten that I'd done that. But as soon as I saw them and picked them up and kind of smelled them and remembered all about that, I was just like, even at my worst, I still knew better. And anyway, I found the photographs <laughs> from 2002 that I took, um, and I found the letters. And it was fascinating to go through them again and read them and remember who he was and who he is. And just to have kind of tangible proof that I'm not imagining this. There is no way the average 16 year old boy would write about the things that he wrote about. Love, intimacy, um, companionship, um, being able to cry if he had to. There are tear marks on those letters. Um, still visible even now. Um, anyway, I feel like this has to do with divine timing a lot because for years and years I could not 
I could not have seen those and understood what they actually meant and understood what he was really trying to give to me because ultimately those letters were full of you know I love you you are amazing to me I can't be without you this is so painful kind of stuff and at the time when I was reading them when they were new I didn't understand what he was trying to say to me because my reaction was oh you you're just exaggerating I'm not that wonderful I'm <laughs> you're wonderful you know um, and I recognize now that it was divine timing that kept me from finding those documents and engaging with that because at one time I was angry enough at him that I would have I would have set them on fire along with all the photographs that I had yep I was that mad I was that fed up I was that just done with all of it um, because there was nothing my ego could do to change the situation so the inclination then is to just fine if I can't change it then it's not there and it's not a problem <laughs> uh, but but I do believe that these things were kept from me because I needed to do that much more learning and understanding and climbing out of the trench to be able to be in a position of command above the trench giving the orders right instead of being you know a private down there in the trench um for lack of a better analogy that's kind of how it has felt over these past few days of kind of re-examining and looking through and kind of going i remember that now huh i wasn't imagining anything I just wasn't able to receive it at the time. I was not ready. I wasn't capable. I was still way too hurt. And and so was he. He was still way too way too young. We were we were too young. <laughs> if I if I can put it any more simply than that, I, you know, I I or I can't put it any simpler than that. We were simply too young. We were given this glimpse of what this is. And how powerful that is and then through events that were beyond our control we had to um, go different ways and you know that was just the way it had to happen I spent a lot of years blaming him for it um, even though that's neither here nor there anymore um, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of say that, you know, I had no control over any of this, but I found these letters, I found the missing photographs that I thought I would never see ever again. Um, on the same, you know, weekend where he and his family were touring down here, um, relatively close to where I live, because bearing in mind, they still live way far north. Uh, like way far away from me um, but on the weekend I found them they were about five hours away from here which is pretty close <laughs> relatively speaking um, and you know he told me about going through a forest where I'd been and I sent him a photograph of me in the forest a few years ago and you know so all these things are lining up in ways that I could not predict or have a hand in at all. You know, he was there, he was here because his sister was getting married and he happened to meet uh, a person at the wedding who he knew and who shares my name, um, who he knew kind of at the time when we were splitting up in 97. And he saw her for the first time in a quarter century at this wedding and he told me about it and I said isn't that interesting indeed hmm 
So yeah, these things work themselves out the way they're supposed to in the time that they're supposed to. Because before now, I was in no way ready to accept any of this because I was not good enough in my mind because I was listening very intently and closely to what the mind was telling me. You know, you're not good enough. You're, you know, inferior in all these ways. And I could give you an endless list, right? Uh, and now that I am, you know, separated from my husband and I can go through my entire life, literally, in boxes and figure out just what in the hell happened <laughs> over all these years and how did I get from there to here? You know, in a lot of ways, there's stuff that happened that I don't even understand why, but they did. Anyway, I feel as though I've gone on long enough, but I just wanted to share this so that you you might have more um, faith and conviction that these things do work themselves out. They really, really do. Even if you don't understand how or what needs to happen or whatever, like that's just evidence that you really don't need to know because when it's time, things will start making themselves clear and known to you that maybe you'd forgotten about or you'd never considered before or whatever. You'll find yourself understanding something that you just couldn't get your hands on before or your head around, you know? Things will start becoming more and more clear once you've released that, you know, desire for them over there once that's been released and you're just looking after your own life and you can, you're looking after that which you can change and do something about and you're not trying to do anything about that person over there because you can't once you're understanding that and you're accepting of that all of a sudden things will start to happen that are you know unique for you and your situation in your life that will help you understand and continue to buoy your faith in that knowledge that you have you know in your soul that conviction that just knowing and understanding that that this is this is happening at all um and anybody else who's you know not going through this who's you know potentially listening to this probably thinks it sounds absolutely nuts right and i understand that i get it it does it sounds nuts to others you know um but it i promise that it isn't and that you're you're having the feelings for a reason don't don't deny that you have a connection here that's important and special um but i understand that there is a temptation and an inclination to indeed do that deny it push it away just want it to be done just be like i want it i want my life to go back to the way it has been that is way more comfortable where I don't have to think about any of this crap anymore <laughs> and worse language than that because um, I've been there I've been there I've been there and it's a sad lonely place to be where you're just defeated and you're just done with everything. And listening to people like me might sound absolutely insufferable <laughs> when you're in that um, state, right? Um, but I promise that it's not insufferable 
and y yeah once you just release the need for them and the constant obsession and fretting and you know once you've gotten through the dark night of the soul where all you can do is cry and not sleep and not eat and feel horrible and have dreams that are not good dreams they're not the normal kind of dreams about your person that are nice dreams there are some bad dreams too and you know once you get through that which is an that's an event in itself you know that's a whole other thing but once you're past that right then you can start thinking okay i i can't i can't need them because it makes me feel like this it makes me feel sad scared angry alone alienated all those things and that's not the way we're supposed to feel we're supposed to feel good we're supposed to feel um we're supposed to feel our best that's what makes that other person sort of see you again they remember and that's what this process has been like for me in my particular situation i've been able to see a direct link to that person from 25 years ago and see what has happened you know since and I can more, much more easily recognize now, yeah, he's still that person. He just kind of lost his way for a while. Just the way I'm the same person, but I lost my way over the years. You know, that's, that's why things turned out the way they turned out. And that's actually okay. And making peace with all that is the, is the, real, is the real goal because the rest of it will work itself out. Um, and when you are able to communicate effectively with them and you're in that kind of a place more regularly, um, you will begin to see who they really are rather than this kind of other person that they act kind of like, you know, meaning that person who wants to push you away, who wants to deny what's going on here, you know, that typical kind of masculine stuff that they are inclined to do, um, even though they know, and because they were there with you, they know what it's like to be with you and how amazing it all feels. They do, but they want to push it away because they're so scared. So, once you've spent some time reconnecting, recommunicating with them after a silence or whatever has happened, all of a sudden you'll start to see, here you are. You know, because that's exactly what happened to me. There you are. That's who I remember. <laughs> and you bring it out of the other. That's just the way it is. And it's amazing. It feels so good. I have never been this satisfied with my life, this happy, uh, even though I physically have less, right? I don't have a car anymore. I live in a really small little apartment in the middle of town where it's loud and there are sirens everywhere and it's just craziness. In the, you know, when I was still married, I was living in this very pretty house out on the lake. Um, we had a car, we had all of the trappings of life, and yet even though I have to carry my groceries home in a bag, sometimes under my arm because it's heavy, because <laughs> I had to buy some sugar or flour that day, you know, as I'm walking home with all that, you know, sometimes I carry like 20 pounds home with me, and 
yeah, it's heavy and my arms are sore and tired when I get here, but would I want to go back to my pretty house with my car and all of that to be with my husband? No, I wouldn't. Because I'm a lot happier this way, <laughs> quite honestly. So, yeah, things will start to make more sense once you believe and trust that divine timing is out there and it's a thing. It, it, it truly is. And I really hope that this helped in some way. Um, and just, yeah, hold on to that and know that you are loved. If not yet by yourself, which is what you should be focusing on, please do focus on that. It really does make a huge difference. Um, but yeah, you are loved by others as well. Um, but you are loved by yourself too, you have to be. Otherwise, things won't get any better. But you will love yourself when you are ready to and you kind of suddenly know how. It's strange and hard to explain. I hope it makes any kind of sense. I will see you in the next video.